Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Matt here with another game update. So this is our 10th video. Um, that's pretty crazy. And you know, there, there's actually a few people I think watching me that, uh, that I don't know in real life. Uh, I think that's still pretty crazy. Um, thank you so much for following along. That's, that's super cool. Over this last month, I've done a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. Um, the biggest of which is actually working on the boss. So that's gonna be the primary focus of this video. I'm gonna show you how I got that boss in the game, all the nuts and bolts that make that work, and a couple other little things. So let's not waste any more time. I wanna jump right into it. Here we go. So what are the high level goals for my boss? I want him to be big, like really, really big. He's the most powerful monster in my game and I want players to know it. So one of the ways I can show that is by making him a lot larger than anything you've faced so far. Next, I want him to transform. I want to give players a, like a wow moment that they'll remember after the game. So I want him to start off the fight as one thing and end as in something entirely different. And last but not least, I want him to use a variety of abilities throughout those two stages to keep the players challenged and engaged. I started out with a little outline of how I wanted the whole boss fight to go. The first phase, I wanted the boss to start out in small form. I wanted him to spout off a little intro monologue to the player to introduce himself. And then I wanted him to go into using his roll and spike abilities and try to chase down the player. This is the easiest form you're gonna fight the boss in. Once you hit an HP threshold on the boss, that was gonna trigger him to make that transformation. So in phase two, the first thing he does, right, is transform into the large form. Then he's gonna start using a whole new set of abilities on you, spin, laser, and mortar. Uh, we'll go into those a little bit later. Phase three, he's gonna become enraged. He's gonna be moving faster. He's gonna change colors a little bit and make like one last desperate attempt to get the player. Once I had a general idea of how I wanted the fight to play out, I started working on the visuals. So here you see, this is the high poly for the small form. It's that first form that you see, it's the least threatening form of my boss that you'll run into. So he's kind of this little, I think it's an Ankylosaurus, um, was kind of my, my reference on this one. Um, hopefully that's right. You can let me know in the comments. He's this creepy little guy. I knew I wanted him to shoot spikes, so I put some spikes on his back. It's kind of like a roly-poly, those little bugs that roll into a ball. I made him segmented, and um, you'll see in the animations, I, I tried to keep in mind, like, okay, this guy needs to be able to roll up. So uh, that, that informed how I built him. I went into the big form, which is over here. And you can see I shared elements between the two so that you knew it was still the same guy in there. So they have basically the same head. This guy, I think, ended up being like 300,000 triangles or something like that. More referencing like a T-Rex. He's a big, big baddie. I think the player probably comes up to his knee, so he's huge. Um, and he is a massive, massive guy there. And he still has the spikes on his back, so that also, again, like kind of ties him back to, to the original small form. And he's got these big, big vicious teeth that he kind of chomps at you with. Once I had those uh, high polys done and I was happy with that, I went into a low poly form like I usually do where I, I transfer all those details down into a version of, now let's go here and just look at one, into a version that I can actually run in game. So this is, instead of 300,000 triangles like the, the high polys were, this guy's only about 8,000 triangles. So he can totally run in the game. I don't know, it looks like his textures aren't set up right. Let's get that fixed. And with the power of movie magic, everything is fixed. Um, I should probably check on these files before I start recording, but what are you gonna do? Here's the little guy in low poly form, ready to go into the game. And then this is what the big guy ended up looking like. So yeah, he's, he's around 12,000 triangles. First, let's look at the little guy. Um, so this first version was actually just like a statue, right? It doesn't move but we go through the process of rigging and skinning and then I start animating. So here I'll quickly show you what some of his animations look like. He's got his little idol, his walk, his attack, his spike, and his transformation, and then the roll. So that's kind of what the little guy does. Next, let's check out the big guy, see what his animations look like. These were really fun to work on. So he's got his idol, his big laser, he spins and attacks when you get too close. The speed of these also will change um, in the game. That's his mortar. He shoots his, shoots like things up in the air. And then, oh, his death. He's done. Next, I went ahead and got our big guy into the engine. 
So here you can see his animations playing in the engine. Um, I've broken them all up and set up different animation events to trigger at specific times during the animation. And I've done this before on other characters. It's, it's really important because at each of these animation events, I can call different functions in scripts to do, do those different ability behaviors in sync with his animation so that he shoots the laser at the right time. He doesn't just, you know, fire it at the wrong moment. But I did do something special on this guy that I don't that I've only really ever done on the player character. I think I would only use this technique on more complicated characters. And I wanted to share it with you because like maybe it'll be helpful to somebody out there. But first, I think I need to show you what a normal character looks like in their animation blend tree. So I'm gonna go over here to this guy here, the smasher. He's not super complicated, but you can see even with these few abilities here it's already starting to get really messy and it, it becomes difficult to keep track of all these different transitions. You can see these arrows here between the different states are transitions that are dependent on these parameters state. So if like is, for instance, like if is dead is true, he's gonna go from idle to dying and you need to have these different states connected and it becomes a nightmare for debugging. So I, I, on complicated characters, I came up with a better solution that I used on the player and I used on this boss here. So let's check that out. This is a heck of a lot cleaner. It's just a few nodes, there's no parameters here. I control all of that via code and it just makes it a heck of a lot more organized. Let me see if I can show you how I set that up. In this block of code here, I have all the behavior controlled for my small form. And then down here, I have all the animations controlled for my large form. And you can see they're just piped into my NPC AI and looking to see what state that that's in because that's just a finite state machine. They can see like, okay, is he in the stun state? I'm gonna play this animation. Is he in the attack state? I'm gonna attack, moving, you know, walking, so on and so forth. It's pretty simple. I find this a lot easier to work with than that crazy node network. And uh, yeah, it just keeps things way more organized. The other thing I will point out before we get out of here is I always play all my animations through a function that looks pretty much like this. Since you're playing it through here, I'm calling the animator and I'm using dot play and then calling the animation. I need to make sure that I'm not gonna play the same animation over and over and over again. So what I do is actually store every animation I play into a variable. And then at the beginning of this function, I check to make sure that it's not the same variable that I had previously played. If that happens, I just return, nothing, nothing gets played again. But if it doesn't, or if this is a new animation I'm trying to play, I go through, I play it, and then I store that animation to be my new previous animation. Now let's go see how it all turned out in game. This is my temporary boss level. Um, I'll come up with something a lot prettier once, uh, once I get to that. But here's the boss fight. He's going through that monologue and then he gets started. I have God mode turned on here so I can't really die and I've adjusted his health so it doesn't take us forever to get through but he's gonna be a beefy boy. So here's his small form. He does his roll attacks. You saw his spike attack earlier. And I added these ground decals to kind of help um, telegraph where he's gonna do his next attack. And hopefully uh, you'll recognize the animations and have enough time before he actually attacks you or does his ability to respond. Oh. He normally does quite a bit of damage here too. So it's, it's not easy and I played through this a ton of times. That's basically a small form. Uh, let's get him to go into his big form. So when I get him to about 20% HP, I think he's gonna switch into his large form. And he should, there he goes. So now he's gonna go into his large form. I have these cool effects going and that's his transition. So now he's big. He's doing some more dialogue. And now all of his abilities have changed. He has this new laser attack. He still swipes at me when I get close to him. Oh, whoa. I think if I get close to him, we'll see if we can get him to do his spin. Yep, there he goes. He'll knock you back. And there's one more attack we haven't seen yet. If I stay at a range, eventually he'll fire his mortar attack. And we'll see a bunch of these circles on the ground. Let's see if we can get him to do that. There he goes. All 
All right, and I'm gonna just start wearing him down now. And we'll get him to transition into his last stage before his death. Or actually, no, his story, he has his enraged form next. Which we'll see if that worked. I haven't actually looked at that recently, so. That's where he's gonna feel, heal back up to full health. He should, actually no, he might already be in that form. I think he's already in his enraged form, so this is his last one. I think he's gonna die here. Yeah, oh, he's just, he's just as surprised as I was, he died. So now he's dead. And this brings up the main menu. Eventually I'll have a like a feedback button here. That's that's a quick glance at the boss fight. If the numbers kind of tuned out of whack just to show you all the different stages in a short amount of time. The one other thing I want to show you besides the boss was I did a pass on the UI in my entire game to make sure that you could navigate through it without having to use a mouse and keyboard. So you can use your controller now to navigate through all the game's UI. Unity has a really cool way to do this. You can actually select any button in your scene and then press visualize and you can see how the transitions are set up. They do have some options here under navigation. By default, it's on um, automatic or it'll be on everything. Um, I always have better luck using explicit and then basically being explicit when I push left on a button, I wanna go here. If I push right on a button, I wanna go here. And that keeps it super organized. The one downside I've found to this is if you kind of jump between mouse and keyboard or just in some way get into a bad state where you've clicked off of a button, you have no way to get back onto it by default that I found with the controller. So I did a bit of work uh, here. I'll show you in the code real quick. I'm gonna start by storing this variable selected button, which is basically my default button or the previous button I had selected. Then in my update loop, which you know takes place every frame, I'm going to check to see like, okay, do I have something selected? Cool, then I'm gonna redefine that selected button variable with that button that the event uh, system has selected. Unity's event system is what they use to control their UI navigation, and that's kind of what I'm piping into. The next thing I'm gonna do is like, hey, if you don't have anything selected, then go event system, go back and look at that selected button variable and select that button. So this behavior essentially means like, I can never accidentally click off of my button and get into a state where I have no button selected. This is pretty essential to having controllers uh, be able to easily navigate through menus and stuff. Now I can navigate through my entire game's UI without using a mouse. So here I'm just gonna flip through the menu really quick with a controller. And I can go through, I can change all my options. This all works, it's awesome. Just piping right into Unity's event system um, I can control all the different sort of UI widgets that come along with it um, without really having to do much. I just get this for free, which is super cool. All right, that's it. Uh, that's that's 10 videos done. I still can't believe, you know, when I was starting this thing out that we'd actually get to 10 videos. That's That's a big milestone, I think. Yeah, so moving forward, I'm still kind of gonna keep continuing on that goal of getting towards that public play test. I, I'm, there's still a lot to figure out. There's still a lot of things I want to get done, but, but really the game is getting pretty close, um, I think to the point where I need to get it in other people's hands and you know, see firsthand um, you know, what their feedback is and what they think I should change. Because I've been staring at this thing for way too long and I'm gonna need your help soon uh, on that. So I, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna roll that out or figure this out. I still want to come up with a name for this project. If you guys have ideas, um, please. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard to come up with a name. Um, but yeah, I would really appreciate it. Yeah, I'll see you in the next update. All right, bye.